to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. <laughs> yeah getting in some exercise getting in some exercise uh james <laughs> what's up you were dancing so hard it cut out my earphones oh i'm sorry yeah you rolled over something you can know can you hear still mm-hmm. i can hear can there's you hear one me thing. there's not one thing i rolled over uh, you didn't you didn't james you didn't you didn't the quarantine 15 is real james oh yes it is very, very real. Um, We're just going with it at this point. Ooh, ooh. Oh, boy, I keep seeing ads. Like I, I don't know if my phone's listening or just like the apocalypse is happening. I keep seeing ads for those bands that Chris Cornell hung himself with. Sure. Um, Whoa, that was a whistly s. What for mine? For me. Oh, for you? Yeah, yeah. Very eh, Yosemite who Sam. Who cares? Anyway. We're going live every day. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> I keep seeing those Chris Cornell bands that he killed himself with, with the carabiner and the whole fucking shit. Sure. It, it creeps me out because, um, you know, obviously he sang one of the greatest songs in the history of our country. Black. I don't mind stealing bread from the mouths of Dickety. Oh. I'm going hungry. I'm going hungry. Yeah, but it's the opposite of what is actually happening to me. I'm not going hungry. We've stocked up. Is it black old sun or black hole sun? Black hole sun, yeah. <laughs> uh, black old sun. Probably be a little racist for a, an all white that's, rock band. Well, that's what I. That's always what I called it, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely uh, black old sun. No, no, no okay. Because no. then people are going to think S O N, and it's just like, oh, black no, old sun. No, no, no. You would always think, you'd always think the sun, right? No. Okay. No. If you said that out loud to somebody, just walk down the streets and casually but ask somebody. But if you sang it like that, black old sun. People black like, oh, old sun. Nope. Won't you come? <laughs> And wash. Okay, yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm definitely not going hungry is what I was trying to get at. Oh, sorry. Um, nah, don't worry about it. We're, we're two different shows right now. Um, <laughs> so we've got all this food. We're stocked up to the hills. I know. It's hard not to just eat it all in one day. It really is. It really is. And that's, that's a problem that a lot of people are having. Is I, that yeah. we don't have enough self control really. Like we're just no. everything is so available to us that yep. if it's like around Yeah, I'm gonna we're like, fucking well, eat it. I had three racks <laughs> of ribs. I'm gonna fucking eat it, dude. I smoked them all. <laughs> did I have to? No. Nah. Why did I smoke all the ribs? Because they were there in the freezer. Because they were there. And it was just like, eh, eh, why the fuck not? Let's throw them on. Um we had what? We had the Traeger going at one point this weekend. Yes. Three racks of ribs that were way too much for a way family of six. No. Because my parents were over. Sure. We have two two children. Two children who won't eat ribs. And we still, yeah, we still had way too many ribs left over there. Yeah. Um, I bought the, eh, I don't want to call them industrial size bags, but the, <laughs> the company bags of chips yeah. from Sam's Club. The taco... Doritos. If you don't know, well, you're not on my level. Mm-hmm. You're just not, and you never will be. Sure. Chances are we'll never be friends in real life. If you don't know what the taco Doritos are, uh-huh. it's a secret flavor that uh, a very, a very specific breed of human knows about. But if you don't know about it, we're not friends. We're probably not friends in real life, and there, we probably have no shot to be friends in real life. Um, these things I haven't seen since. I'm going to go back circa 04, maybe 06. Haven't seen them anywhere. When the apocalypse happened, Sam's Club had stocked these things. Mm-hmm. Now, to describe the size of bag here, what would, you, what would you reckon? About four bags in one? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty big, right? Like two, You know, like a family size? Two of those. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I eat the entire bag in a day and a half, I think. Uh-huh. Um, I'm going to come clean about that. Mm-hmm. Um I think There's I, bl- no I, secret I, well, I, bl- yeah. I blamed it on one of my children. You know, at one point I was like, oh, no, he knocked he knocked it over on the floor, you know, 
coronavirus. They didn't want to pick it up and stuff it back in the bag. Sure. I ate them all mm-hmm. is, is exactly what happened. Oh, yeah. And uh, Doritos, I see you and I still love you. You're, you're one of my all time faves. Yeah. One of my all time oh, faves. Oh, yeah. I brought this up in a, in a conversation with uh, Lakeith Stanfield the other day on Instagram. Mm-hmm. It was obviously one of my faves, one of my favorite actors. Mm-hmm. And I just wrote, hey, man, a real hombre. Uh, We'll let you know what type is his favorite Dorito. And he said, Cool Ranch. Cool Ranch. And yeah. then Jack Black wrote in and said, Nacho, which he's the only one on the planet who can get away with that. Right. Because of the greatness of Nacho Libre, obviously. But I will go Nacho cheesier for sure. That, so that's your, your, that's your numero uno. Yeah. It used to be Cool Ranch. Mine's Cool Ranch. Yeah. yeah. It used to be. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. No. And now it's Nacho cheesier because there's literally nothing better so here's the thing i will always go taco but i won't throw that out there in a public setting like that because a lot of people just don't know about the taco sure. Dorito. they don't know about the taco seasoning dorito and it's the only one that comes in the old school bag mm-hmm. like the bags from the the late 80s where you're just like oh shit very eye-catching yeah yeah it's it's retro very fucking uh-huh. retro where you're just like all right vintage yeah vintage so not only have I eaten, and this is week one shit, we're probably, what, eight days into this apocalypse right now? Uh, yeah. I've eaten in, what, ribs? We've made so many ribs that I couldn't eat them. Sure. Uh, I've eaten an entire industrial-sized bag of taco Doritos. hmm And I've siphoned through, like, mm, I want to say maybe 12 kind bars. Mm-hmm. Because I, I bought, what, 15 packs of those fucking things? Yep. Because it was one of those things where those will keep. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then I got an email this morning. I felt like shit all weekend, and I had to work on Sunday, mm-hmm. so I didn't really get to, to work out or whatever. You've been running. You've been pretty diligent about it. I'm day four of running every day. Yeah. And then today, uh, I did a little bit of my beach body yoga, beach body text Bro, that's 30, 30, 30. There you go. Boom. Um, Bango. So I'm going to finish that. So I think I'm going to just fluctuate mm-hmm. running and yoga, and then I'll be uh, hot and slim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In my mind, <laughs> since no one can see me. So I got a, an email that was encouraging today because I usually meal prep it, right? Right. Um, it was shut down. For obvious reasons, right? Obvi. And I was just like, ah, oh, fuck, Now's their man. time to shine. I might order, too, to I, be honest with you. I got a, I got an email from them, and they were like, hey, man, we're, we're up and at them. We can deliver tomorrow. And I was like, support local businesses. Fuck yeah, but it's yeah. also what I eat every day. So right. I was like, great. <laughs> I ordered, like, you know, 10 meals for the week, because I usually have lunch and dinner. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big breakfast guy, sure. although I do love it. I will butt fuck uh, a sausage egg McMuffin with, with chi all day long. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, come just on. the most like normal statement of all time. Nope. Hey, guys. I know it's weird, but it I is. could butt what? I could butt fuck one all day long. Like Everyone t- can? No. Everyone can? No. Some people won't Everyone eat breakfast can. for dinner. They won't eat breakfast for dinner. McDonald's breakfast? Look, I agree with you, Jabes. I'm on your side on this one, okay? But I'm, I'm just... talking about there's some hombres out there who don't fuck with breakfast at dinner, and they should. Because the one exception to the rule is sausage, egg, McMuffin, witchy, witchy. Those hash browns also, I could gangbang those all night long. Everybody can. Like, all night long. There's not one person listening that doesn't agree with you. Right in. So, we are live on YouTube. Subscribe like- on YouTube. Drinking Bros Podcast. All of our media company is on this channel on YouTube. Let me know out there if, if you're down to butt fuck hash browns all day long. I so here's the thing. I was in a car. We were in uh, Texas doing some work a couple sure. weeks ago, right? Sure. Feels like might as well have been 1993, and it was exactly two weeks ago. And went to McDonald's late at night, and I ordered that like around the midnight hour. Yeah. 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 A lot of dirty looks in the car. Nah. From my bros, and I was like, Really? What? You motherfuckers they are gonna judge me? And they were like, No, dude. They I'm going. Aren't real homies, dude. I'm going to go double quarter pounder with chi and that late at night, which I get. But if that is on the option, like that is on the menu as an option. Um, Absolutely. Come on, Absolutely. dude. Absolutely. I'm, I'm pulling out my, my dangalang and just t- ordering two hash yeah. browns and then I just mean, slapping it. 
on both sides, dude. I'm sandwiching it with the hash browns. But they weren't the down with that. The ultimate preaching to the choir. Like, the ultimate definition of to preaching you. to the choir. To every single person. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm All just right. looking like... Every single person. No, you're wrong. I'm reading. Uh, uh, let's let's read it right now. Jason Carter said, "I don't eat McDonald's because I respect my body." Well, J- or Jaron Carter. I'm sorry, Jaron. Y- you don't respect society, then. Um, like your body has nothing to do with the rest of the world. You were wrong, Jesse. Um, so okay. look, I'm going to go down this because here here we go with Adam Dankoff, Bo Jangles, dude. No, <laughs> I'm not doing fucking Bo Jizz, dude. Late at night. It, not only that, but like, th- look. Well, what's the debate? Is that people don't like breakfast for dinner or that they don't like McDonald's? Yeah. Or, like, okay. Th- th- look, there's a lot of it, man. Uh, you know, there's another one that says Adam Dankoff Waffle House. Yes, I will accept Waffle House. However, restaurants are closed, my man. So, right. dude. And, and the other part about Waffle House is this. It's a sit down meal versus I want to grab something and go home. And eat it in shame in my bathtub. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah, yeah. If I like, if I sit down in a Waffle House that late at night, um, I better be doing pure MDMA in someone's house with the windows blacked out with trash bags all night, so we can't see the sunlight. And now I'm having breakfast to feel like a normal human being with the rest of the world, as opposed to eh, this late at night anymore. I'm not gonna do it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like college, you kind of like, all right, cool. Let's go and just hang out. You know. Maybe sneak in a, a few roadies, maybe a flask of something. Uh, get get one of those uh, vanilla cokes, throw some rum in it, mm-hmm. and just be like, "All right, great," because their Coca Cola products there are the, are the finest in the land at Waffle House. Sure. And you know, I love Waffle House more than life itself. Right. But if I'm grabbing something to go, and now that they went to breakfast all day, whew, the only thing false. I order at McDonald's, yeah, is a sausage, egg, and cheese. No, look, I, I love the rest of their menu, and I'm, I'm not going to shit you- on it. I know. I'm sorry. I'm just telling. You. Can I just say like one thing? Yeah, about yeah, me? yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just for a second. I mean, I'm not going to take up too much time. But um, that's the only thing that I order, even before they did breakfast all day. So you would go before 10:30. I could never make the 10:30 cutoff. That was the dream, right? If you could do that, you were really like a go-getter. Getting there, right? Or you were up all night, right? And you mm-hmm. got to the beginning, the 6 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do not anymore order burgers, chicken sandwiches, fries, or anything. The only thing. And there is nothing better in this world. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. By the way, and their stock was kind of heading the other way. It was in shambles. Once they went breakfast all day, through the motherfucking roof, if you sure. had it. Uh, look, the stock market's falling out right now, so it doesn't really matter what you have. But uh, before before the good times, before China ruined everything. You know, we all had fucking money and shit. We could do it if we wanted. It's bound to happen. It was bound Fuck, to happen. Not that, not this. Not on this fucking level. Like I, you know, and I watched some of the coverage last night on C- CNN and uh, uh, sixty Minutes, uh, obviously, and they were just like, "There's not enough masks, and there's only you know whatever." You can't blame the government for any government. I don't give a shit who who is in office, Obama, whoever else you love. You cannot blame the government for only having like five million masks. This was this is a fucking horror movie we're living in right now. There's yeah. no way you would keep that many masks like on hand. Same thing if a fucking civil war broke out and it was every household against each other. There's not enough stockpiled shit to really quell that right now. So let's not pretend there is. Right. Um, so I'm not even going to get into to all that other bullshit. Same with the stock market. Nobody fucking knew. Nobody knew about any of this shit. Uh, but yeah, you the, know who did know. Do you know who did know about it? Who? Do you remember Cynthia Brown? Cynthia Brown. Uh, why she do I know that? Is she the psychic that would go yes. on like Oprah and shit? My mom has seen her in in Moms public. Moms love her. She's seen her in public like five times. Yeah. So she published a book in 2009. Uh-huh. Okay. Called End of Days, Predictions and Prophecies about the End of the World. Oh, my God. I read it. You did? I read that book. Yes. Why? My mom, so my mom was super into Cynthia okay. Brown, right? And then uh, she ends up going to see her, and my like, so you go to these arenas because she was selling out arenas at this time, like. Um, and my mom goes to see her. She got picked. So beforehand, oh, okay. you get picked to ask a question. My mom got picked, and then I was like, eh, let me let me do some research on on Cynthia Brown. I ended up reading that book. Yes, she did predict something of this facet in the book, but. I don't know what year or what time. Do you have? Okay. So in around 2020, 
A severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe, attacking the lungs and the bronchial tubes and resisting all known treatments. Almost more baffling than the illness itself will be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived, attacking again in 10 years. No fucking way, dude. And I never liked her. (laughs) Just saying. Just saying. Cynthia Brown. Cynthia Brown. Wow. Uh, That's right. That's from Killer Zombies um, Instagram. But Who's Killer Zombie? She's my friend. She's a hairstylist from L.A., lost her leg in a motorcycle accident. She's a pretty hardcore bitch. But anyway, she was like reading it and circled it and everything. Wow. I read that book, man. How weird. You know, I read uh, that. I I read all the Nostradamus books and all that other shit, too. Um, That's wild. Wow. It's wild, but it's also like, you know, I don't, I, I have no idea. Since we're going down this road, do you believe in that shit? We, we had a psychic on the show in the early days, remember? We had her come over to the house. I don't. And all you of know, it was wrong. I don't. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> you know, for the most part, I'm always like, I know there's people that are hyper aware yeah. of like feelings and people around them and reading a room. There are some mm-hmm. people that are gifted in that way, right? They sure. can be like, kind of feel like you right yes but i don't think it's like some outside force and i don't think it's like some special like crazy weird gift you have i don't know yeah i don't know like she's not a medium she's just a straight up psychic right so you're kind of like yes yes. where do you get your info Mm -hmm. when it's a medium it's like people from the other side are telling her basically right so yeah interesting although she's been wrong so many times that like (laughs) yeah even a broken clock, right? So is right, right, uh, exactly. So uh, it's just kind of like I don't know. Maybe she just threw out a number and said something. And Oprah used to have her on all the time, all the time all the until time. I think she like something happened where she either like it was like the finding of some dead boy or a missing something yes. that like yeah. did not pan out mm-hmm. in any way yeah, yeah, or yeah, something, yeah. or she found out some kind of scandal. Yeah, Don't there, there, yeah, the there, there was something Brown there. Cynthia Brown scandal, but there was something there, and the other one went through it to the uh, Long Island Medium. Yeah, where they they allegedly caught her recording like well, out in the lobby, or right. Well, here's so. what I'll say about her: is like I think maybe sometimes one on one back in the day, maybe, but when they turned it into a money making machine, it's not something that you can like turn on like that in a big stadium sure so i think all these people that ended up getting caught my theory on it is that they did have some kind of something a little bit maybe back in the day right one-on-one uh-huh people they could like predict you know like get some kind of insight but then when you turn it into like a stadium thing sure what vo- what really are all these dead people behind you like and you found that one person you know yeah just sort of that's when it turns fucky right yeah so i don't know i don't know do you you don't believe in it i look i don't believe in it because i went to i went to a celebrity psychic like the the top one out in los angeles um it was whitney Whitney, a friend of mine at the time whitney cummings was Mm -hmm. the one who was just like go see this this chick right and Mm -hmm. i was like all right so we went and uh the deal was um she records you. It was a woman. Um, and I, I will say something. That, like, there was very, she was spiritual, right? Um, there was something there to it, right? And she said, look, I'm going to record it. Um, and then you get to take it with you. And yeah. then see if it happens. And then right. in six months, come back. If it hasn't, I'll give you your money back and, and give you a free read. It's exactly what happened. So I went. I was like, none of this came true. And you are the dick that would do that too. No, no, no. I just wanted to know. Go back and get your money back, though. I mean, please. I did not get my money back. Oh, I thought so you. So hang on. Said. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not done with it. So in between, two other friends had gone. Their lives completely fucking changed, and everything this woman said came true. And I was like, "Fuck, man. I don't understand." Like, I mean, their their lives change in like massive ways, including Whitney's. Like, mm-hmm. like she was. That was a, a, a rapid dis- uh, ascent for her. And uh, and another friend of mine. So I was like, what the fuck, dude? Um, so I went back and I was like, hey, I don't really want my money back. Like, I, I just want to read and I just want it to be 
real, like something, you know, and I had a, a bunch of like big projects going on at the time mm. and uh, did it again. Um, none of it, none of it came true. And then I got a call from her and she said, Hey, I'm just calling to check in, you know, and her schedule was like crazy books. You can only, it was like a three month out process mm -hmm. for, for somebody like her. And, uh, and I just, I answered the phone and I was like, yeah, I was like, I really hate to do this, but you know, fucking none of it came true. And she goes, you know, the weird thing about you, cause she wrote all of this down and she would look up at the ceiling she would take something on you. It was either a watch or a set of keys that you always carried with you. Hold it in one hand and then just write. But like pages of writing staring up the ceiling the entire time. And Never then when look you down. you look up at the ceiling too, she grabs your wallet and looks through it. No, no, oh, no nothing okay. like that. Sorry. Like I had nothing in my wallet or anything on me. Oh, okay. And uh, so she called back and was just like, hey, did, did what happened? And I was like, nothing. Like I'm doing this and this and this. And I was like different projects and Blah blah blah, and then one thing, one project that she was like, "That's not, that's not going anywhere." Um, I took one meeting and I got full financing. I get, a, I got a, che a huge check at a lunch, and I was like, "Yeah, that other thing that you said was going to happen." I was like, I, "That was the fastest I've ever gotten a film finance in my entire life." And I was like, "I got a fucking check in my hand, a personal check." And I was like, "That's never happened to me before in my life." And she was like, "Man, I'm really sorry." And uh, she fucking. Gave me back. She mailed back the money. I didn't ask for it back. Right. She mailed it back and just said, you know, you're one of those people where your mind is moving at 100 miles an hour. And she was like, I don't I don't know that I would ever get you right. She goes, I wouldn't even tell you to come back in. And I was like, all right, well, I appreciate she, the honesty. And then I got the fucking money in the you. mail. Yeah. I got the money in the mail and that was it. Yeah, she was done. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. You believe in it? You were a nightmare. We had one on the show. Yeah, no, I just said, I, d I mean, I don't. Really. So at no point, like if you sat down with Cynthia Brown, like she couldn't change her mind? No, but at the at the same time, maybe I, maybe I do believe it and that's why I don't want to do it. Mm. But basically I just don't want to do it. Like I don't want to know. I don't, I don't want to know. I, I say I do. I want to know. Because I think that you, there's part of me that also thinks that you can make whatever happen in your life happen right so i wish uh, the things that i asked for so like if you hear that this is happening and that's always in the back of your head mm -hmm. do you self you know whatever prophecy whatever that is self-fulfilling right? prophecy yeah you like do, it do yourself? you make that happen because she put it into your head i don't know right so it's like she tells you this stuff in the future yeah. these people whitney whoever like has it in their mind mm -hmm. and then like just uses their thing that would happen anyways to get there. Look, I, it, the only person I had met that was had the work ethic that I did out there was Whitney Cummings, f for real. And I'll, I've I've said this to you privately, but I'll I'll say it publicly. Like that was the only person that had the, the exact same work ethic. Where both of us were fucking gangsters, writing until a gajillion hours, and that was kind of my only friend that I could talk to late at night. Where we were both writing all day and all night, and it was just fucking crazy, right? Her success in particular going to a psychic, right, and, and then saying this is what's going to happen to you and blah, 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 was not shocking to me, nor did it slow down what she was going to do. Because I think it, it, it goes with – it can go the other way where you, you look at it and say, all right – well, somebody, a, some famous psychic told me all this shit was going to happen. It was going to be amazing. My life was going to be amazing. That could slow you down. It didn't slow me down. D definitely didn't slow her down. And, you know, I, it could work both ways. I, I guess you could say where it's just like you take all of it for, oh, well, shit, this is going to happen to me anyways. I don't really have to work hard. So I think you c it could go both ways. Um, and I know people like that in life, do you? Where they're like, oh, the world will fucking take me on my journey and my, oyster. right. And like, I, I have friends that fail upwards all the time where I'm just like, because they believe in like, just put it out in the universe for a reason. And, well. it'll, and it'll just happen. And they don't really work that hard. And I'm just like, God damn, man, how the fuck did this go down for you? Right. So it, it can go both ways. And I, I think there is a danger to believing all of the great shit and not actually working for it. Um, things like this, like a prediction like this, I really like, though, because right. it's nonspecific to me. It's just for the world of like, hey, man, this is what's going to happen. And it's going to be in 2020. Yeah. Um, but so, so when my mom used to go see Cynthia Brown back in the day, and we didn't talk about this before going on air. I didn't know you were bringing this up. But um, 
they, Cynthia Brown would always lead off, I guess, with the audience and say, look, before, if I pick you, because it was like a, a raffle. You put your thing in a bowl and you sure. paid, you know, 50 bucks to get in or whatever it was. Sure. She goes, if I pick you, the deal is this. If it's something horrific or someone's going to die or whatever, like you I'm have not. to be prepared for that. And I'm not responsible for what I say or what I tell you about your life. So Ooh. if you want to know, great. If not, then when I call your name, say you don't want to do it because I could tell you some horrific shit. And I asked my mom, I said, what, what actually went down? She straight up told this people that their family members were going to die. And she would tell them who was going to die in their family. Oh, my God. Yeah. So that's the other part of it. You know, so it's just like, meh. Whether I believe in it or not, mm -hmm. I still don't want to go to one, if that makes sense. I still don't want to know. Got it. I'm not sure if I do, but I would rather not know. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I think I have enough, like, anxiety about making the right decision always. Like, as you know, where I'm always like... You know, mm -hmm. like I'm just so worried to make the right decision for the future, whatever that may be. Got it. That it almost like, you know. Sure. Maybe it would help me. Maybe Look, I don't push know. in the right direction unless you heard some negative shit about yourself and then maybe it wouldn't. So someone like someone like me, it doesn't affect my mental state or work ethic at all. So it's just like, ah, it'd be cool to know and it would probably give you a boost for that day. So would a shot of B12. So. Right. <laughs> and so would just like you know? keeping your head down and working hard, working hard yeah. and taking care of your family yep. and just like, and you I, know, trying to play tapes to the end, like as far as decisions that I make, like trying to be like, what does that look like in five years? What does that look like in 10, 20? You know, like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And I don't need any more distractions as far as like, well, but then is that going to lead to the thing that she said that I'm supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. And I gave you that advice when you guys started drinking broettes, both of you, you and Tiffany, your co-host, I just said, look, just keep working hard and block out the noise. Like, mm -hmm. there's going to be people that hate it, love it, have a million suggestions, questions, all that other bullshit, and it's just like, eh. It's funny, most of the suggestions that we get are from guys. Are they really? And we have to remind them that, welcome, we love you. <laughs> But it's not exactly for you. And but it's pretty funny. It's funny, right? Yeah. It's always guys being like, hey, quick suggestion. And we're like, hey, thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's a girl um, show. It's a girl show. It's a girl show. We uh. do, I mean, we do get guys though, and I do love the man fans, I have to say. But mm -hmm. you know, you're you're a fly on the wall. You know what I mean? Sure. You're a fly on the wall. Yeah. You don't get to interject. I'm so sorry. Uh, by the way, I and I love your show. Just subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, Drinking Broettes. Thank you. On uh, iTunes, Spotify, all that We're definitely that business. getting there. You know, we're finding our way. I think every podcast, when they first start, is like, you know, you're not going to know what your exact format and everything. So we're trying a bunch of different things. Every show is different. We just try and be fun and real is the only thing that we try and keep the same. And we're just... I, I tell people this. It's it's about 80 to 100 episodes yeah. in where you figure out who you are, what your show is, all that other stuff. And, you know, I, it's, it sounds like a lot, and it is, but podcasting is also like a craft. Well, and you if, know. It's like anything else in this It's life. like anything else. I mean, look at Joe Rogan. Look job. at Marin. Yeah, dude. Marin's first iteration of his show, like the first exactly 80, 50 or whatever, were like this variety show mm -hmm. that he was doing like half comedy, half improv, call-ins. Um, weird like sketches. It, it felt like a uh, a format. He wanted a, a from night the nineties. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. he wanted like a like Conan O'Brien show sure. basically, and sure. he wasn't able to get it. So he's like, "Hey, I'm going to do it on podcast." And I think it was the one of the podcasts with his friend that like came out. His comedian friend, mm -hmm. something Glass, Todd that, Glass. Yeah, yeah, that came out on his show. Like came out as gay on his oh, show, gotcha. and like it was. He was just like, I don't know what this is. Like, I just talk to you and I I just start like opening up yeah. like this is your show. Like, this is what it is. So but that wasn't until you're right. Hundred episodes. Hundred episodes. You're not going to know. So if you're out there and you have a podcast at home and you're like, hey, man, when am I going to know? A ah, hundred in uh, for real. Uh, it just takes a while, man, to figure it out and figure out what the audience likes and what you do best and all that other shit. But, uh, um, you know, it. it Took me one episode to figure out that it was the greatest thing of all goddamn time. It was Tiger King. 
Oh, can we can we dive into Tiger King? Ooh, ooh! I wish I had uh, one of the uh, when Post Malone says ooh, ooh. Oh uh, yeah, I wish I we could need to just, program that. Yes, in. I just want to program that in so I could play that button of him saying ooh. Um, um, it's the best. So I was like, hey. Will you watch something with me? Mm -hmm. What is it? Yeah. I'm like, it's a little bit of a murder mystery kind of. Thing. You sold that wrong. You sold, you sold me a, a false bill of goods. How would, you, how would you have me explain it? I mean, honestly. I would say, so to all these weird wildlife places around the country that aren't like professional zoos, it is the Borderline story. Borderline illegal. Yes. Uh, it, 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 <laughs> yes. Bare, barely legal. It is the story of all of these weird wildlife things that you're like, ah, I'm on a family vacation to Myrtle Beach or to, you know, yeah. Florida or yeah. wh wherever yeah. you're going. And you're like, man, I want to see those gators wrestle or, you know, I want to see fucking tigers at some weird exhibit or something like that. That's that. We have one here in Wilmington. Um, and it's called, what is it? Trem. What is it, Alec? Trigembo. Trigembo Zoo. Where is this? Just as weird as everybody else. It's on uh, college. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, and we, it's we always like, one. what is that? So it, here's the other part about it. What are they doing there? They have lions. And when they showed that map last night of where all these illegal lions have been sold, guess where there was a dot at? <laughs> right here in Wilmington, brother. That was Trimbago. Wilmington. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I fucking... Knew it. So I've been to that weird zoo and I was just like, yeah, these these animals definitely don't look like they want to be here. They're all dirty and lying in like the cages are shitty. Uh, I took my child there. Right. And they were like, oh, you can buy a bag full of peanuts and throw them right at the monkeys. I was like, eh, I don't think this I should be doing this, but I did it anyways. <laughs> like I was pelting these fucking things at monkeys and like, I don't know, maybe probably 85 percent of the monkeys were real goddamn pissed off about it. They were yeah. like. Stop throwing fucking food at me, yeah. dick. Um, and I was like, ah, and it's, like yeah, but I'm like, yeah. yeah, it's fine, right? Like, it's all legal. I paid 15 bucks and can do whatever I want. Pull my dick out and put it in there. That's what this series is, is all of these weird fucking half zoos uh, or little, like, with little wildlife things that exist around the nation that you're like, man. Like, what are they Should do? I be here? There's yeah. probably no regulations, and it turns out there are no regulations. Yes. And we're halfway through it right now. We're going to gun through the other half tonight. Um, whoever's on uh, YouTube Live with us right now, um, don't fucking tell me the ending, you fucking dum-dums, because I want to I wanna see the end of this. Because when I started watching this, you had sold this as a murder mystery type of deal, right? I said it's one of like my shows. I, okay, can we watch one of my shows? I understand that. All right. Um, Which I, is I always was that unaware that there was a potential murder until episode three. I thought it was just a, the story of these weird cat. tiger fucking people. Big you, cat people. Is yeah, what they call them right. Yeah, big big cat, big, big cat people. And mm -hmm. um, because for a long time in America, a very long time. You could buy exotic animals. Right. We all know those people with exotic animals. And, you know, we've been doing Crime Corners on the show. Um, and we're going to do one uh, tonight again or this afternoon again. And uh, some of them are like the ones you read where it's like, oh, there's a live tiger in a, a Houston man's house. Yeah. And you're, it's a full grown, you know, 800 pound tiger living in an apartment. The wife is missing. In Houston. Yeah. Exactly. And you're like, man, how the fuck do people get access to this? Well, you used to be able to get these animals and, you know, people would sell them around the country. This whole doc is about that world. And it does not disappoint. The, I was just talking to Dan Cummins from uh, Time Suck, right, literally right before we got on the air. Shout out to Dan Cummins and Time Suck Podcast. You're one of my favorite podcasts out there. Um, he's just a close friend, too. But um, and either way, he, he texted me before. He's like, how fucking crazy is this shit? And I was like... This is this is so crazy that if I wrote this script and made this into a movie and I pitched this to executives without having seen this documentary, they would say these characters aren't believable and this seems hokey. This seems like a sham. Like you're an audience won't sit through this and nah, believe it. It's fake. 
the they'd be like the costumes are too much yes. the rings yes. like no one would have that many rings in the ear yeah. and like a little flap of skin like no one would do that with a leather this, hat and a blonde mullet the like this is sexual isn't real. aspect of it like sure the weird sex cult of it all the weird each like, one of them is in a sex cult oh yes yeah each one of them is married to multiple partners multiple partners um, that I work mean, for them for free mm -hmm, 130 bucks a week why each one decided on that and then the one woman's her shit's free like oh yeah you can volunteer and go up to level five and then you can really get in there with the tigers when you start saying level five shit that's congratulations cool. you're on that's that's what scientology does hey man you're on different levels now so um, yes yes and I, I we didn't get to the murder aspect of it i'm not going to go too deep into this because i posted about it this morning and i just said look man Exotic Joe has become my entire, or Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic yeah. has become my entire life during this quarantine. I am grateful to Netflix <laughs> for every last second of this series that I, ca I cannot fucking wait until mm. the day is over tonight so I can binge the rest of it and come back tomorrow and, get, and give you answers about right. what it is. I'm not going to give any of the show away. I'm not going to give you any spoilers because this just started airing like three days ago. I've never gotten the reaction on social media that I have to this guy when I posted his picture this morning. So I saw it and I was like, I had see, it was a podcast first on, on Wondery. Mm -hmm. And I had listened to the podcast. They didn't go this in depth. So I didn't know any of this. But anyways, it went from a podcast to Netflix and I was like holy shit like is this gonna be awesome or what and then Eric Tanzi mm. messaged and was like you absolutely have to we're, we're Tanzi fans yeah we're Tanzi so fans, I yeah. was like all right mm -hmm. let's do it yeah so I suggested it to Dan he said no thank you he okay. is missing the fuck out. Yeah, he's missing out a, a couple of my comedian Loser. friends a couple of my comedian friends had hit me up and be like hey man are you into this Tiger King thing yet? And I was just like, ah, I was like, man, I've been, we've been gassing out shows, you know, just live content to keep you guys going throughout the day during this weird quarantine. And I was like, you know, I haven't really had time for anything. And then the weekend hit finally. Um, Cause let's face it. Last week felt like it was 10 years long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a year last week was. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was crazy. We were, Exhaustito yeah. by the end of the day. Um, but anyways, I, I said, "Look, man, I'll I'll get to it over the weekend." And who? What? When I when you said I want to watch this, and then we turned it on, and you didn't say what it was yet, and then I saw the picture for Tiger King, and I was like, "Fuck, man, I I really need to watch Tiger King." I, I apologize, and you go, "No, that's the thing I wanted to watch," and I was yes. like, "Yes." So we were all fucking in, and mm -hmm. it exceeded everything. Of all time, if if you're quarantined, well, you are quarantined. Let's face it. There's like three of us working, so I think, uh, and, yeah. and this is probably illegal. Yeah, as we're uh, we're probably shouldn't be Don't doing this. Don't tell anybody. We're from a bunker. Yeah, and exactly. We're just doing this ourselves in our basement. Um, no, we're with Hoda's the doing studio. it. As long as Hoda's Hoda. at the studio, yeah, then I'm gonna be there. Exactly. Um, but uh, once we got down this, I can't wait to watch the entire thing tonight. I don't give a shit how late I'm up. I'm getting to the end of this tonight, and I've got to know the answer. I've got to know what Have is to. going on um, because in the beginning of it, the, the exotic Joe is calling from jail. I don't know what he's in jail for yet. I, I still don't. And I got to know tonight. And here was my self-discipline last night. I'm really proud of myself. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a pat on the back for this one. I know I never do that, but I will today. Sure. Um, Very I'm gonna give rare. A pat him on the back because usually when I see something of like seven to 10 episodes, and I'm like, I'm like, oh man, I, I'm gonna just go through the news and look through the answers. Right. Refuse. A lot of people do that, and I don't I, I, know I refuse, why. I refuse to do it. People will be like, oh, I looked it up. I Googled it. It's episode two, and you're like, why? Like, go mm. on the fucking journey. If you're going anyways, like, go to the end. I'll tell you why. Because nowadays, documentaries are split into. 86 part series so many different but it's yes, to take it's, you down the winding road it's of not like, though it's not like mcmillions mcmillions to me like i gave that up after been a movie episode three it should have been yeah. an hour and a half movie like yeah dude you're look at the characters from mcmillions and look at the characters from uh tiger king i the characters in mcmillions can't last that long whereas tiger king Jesus Christ, I could watch 30 fucking episodes of that and never get sick of it because it's so bug fuck crazy that I'm just like, oh my God. Yeah. Um, and the weird thing is, like, I, and I, I don't know what happened to these people, but like, 
one of them I root for. And, like, he could be the fucking killer. I don't know what he did. Look, it's also an attestment to, like, the power of documentary, right? And whoever's making it. Mm -hmm. So each episode, they will skew it a different way. So you could be like one episode, you're like, oh, my God, that bitch. <laughs> the next episode, you're like, oh, my gosh, that weirdo. Yeah. The next episode. So it's like they are using the tools of persuasive. Masterful. Right. Masterful. Which they did in Making of a Murderer, right? Making a Murderer. Yeah, Making a Murderer. Yeah. I got I just saw I've been keeping my phone on me. I, t I typically don't do this because we've been doing live shows all week. I just got a text from one of my best friends from college. He says, Ross. Weird to watch the remainder of Tiger King Monday a.m. before 9 a.m. Asking for a buddy of mine. Oh, my God. Dead serious. And I'm like, dude, um, Look. That's, that, that's where we are with this. It, it will change your life. Uh, you know, I don't know how you would explain this to your children. So definitely probably not have them in the room. No, um. no, no, no. <laughs> my son is very inquisitive right now. And it would be yeah. a shit show too many questions too that, uh, many questions that i even have i can't got questions. imagine <laughs> starting with mom what's why is his hair like that no i'm gonna why does I'm, he have why is he married to three dudes that's gonna be later on that's a later on question but you're gonna have to start no, I, I don't you're care if you're to, gay or straight no Why're no no i'm just people? Say, no no later on in the series i'm saying question oh, one oh, oh, yeah yeah Question one, scene one. <laughs> What's with the hair? What is the little ring hanging from his eyelid yeah. and not the eyebrow? Yep, yep, yep. Or is that age? You know, it's just kind of drooping down there. But eyebrow the ring usually goes right, like around the eyebrow. Yeah. His is an eyelid ring. Yeah. That was my first question. Whew. So with, with Tiger King... It's one of those things where you you oddly find yourself rooting for one of the characters too. The, the other part about it is, I, I guess as a kid growing up, right? I've gone to all of this shit, like because I'm I'm from Georgia, like I'm from the South, so like I've been to the Gator Wrestling and the Gator Museums and all that. I judge just took Gator, our son, Different. to one of them. No, it's not. We've got a friend who his cousin doesn't, and he lost what half of his arm or something crazy. I know. I'm just saying, like the t the people, and it's even explained in episode one, right? Like the, there's monkey captivity people. Yep. Very there's different. Cat, there's cat people. There's yeah. alligator captivity people. Mm -hmm. Very different, but big cat. Yeah. People. Yep. So specific. I could not agree more. Yeah. Uh, and there was this guy in New Jersey that. Um, uh, in Long Beach Islands at this place called Fantasy Island. It's like a little place for kids with like bumper cars and rides and all that stuff. But it was yeah. nice. It wasn't like white trashy. Right? It wasn't like, oh, I might die in this parking lot of Walmart type shit. Like, sure. It was there for ever and lived there and was built there. It was a year round place, right? Okay. Um, but every summer on Wednesday nights, there would be one of these animal guys who would come. And he would be like, oh, and, he, and here are these animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, And the, you know, I'm, it's, I'm not gay. I'm from Atlanta, boys. Oh, sure. I'm not gay. I'm from Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And It's hard to tell out there. And as a child, when you see these people, you look at them and you're like, oh, man, what a fucking awesome life. I bet you that would be right? a great life. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Rolling around with some rattlesnakes. And mm. uh, he had this this floppy albino turtle. This is Long Beach Island for everybody out there. Um a floppy albino turtle. Yes, it was a soft shell. It's a soft shell turtle. So, um, at the and it was all white. That's not a thing, it is. bro. It is. And at the end, you could you could squeeze the shell and bend it. They, they would come in and let you bend the shell. You could bend it. Um, this was a fucking dream you had, no, dude. Because so every summer as a kid, we would ask our because my grandparents lived there, and then I owned the house like later on after like my entire family passed away and all this other shit. I would go every summer as a child and be like, I want to see the albino turtle. I want to touch the, because you touch the shell and it's floppy. So the shell was floppy, everything. And it was, it was an albino completely white and it was a soft shelled floppy white real, albino bro. turtle. No. And then afterwards they would let the kids come in and bend it and like pet the turtle and things like that. So I did it for years <laughs> and that was and the highlight of our summer. It. Yeah. It was to bend the shell because it was all, it, it was so. Was it a seat? You know what it felt like? It felt exactly like those things that you buy your kids and put them in a cup of water and they grow. Uh-huh. You know? What's yeah, that? yeah. 
I, no, not a chia pet. Um, I know what you're saying. Uh, those little rubbery. Yeah, it's like a small thing, and then like it grows in water. Or what, yeah. Whatever it is, right? That, that's what this this the shell felt like. So it was kind of it was tough enough so that he could roll around and shit. But uh, yeah, it was an albino soft shelled turtle. Um, super rare, and then every summer we would ask our, our parents to go see this fucking thing and uh, and then touch it. Soft shell turtles are considered to be some of the tastiest wild game to eat. Oh, are you reading this right now? Yeah. Yikes. If you have caught or otherwise obtained a soft shell turtle, <laughs> you must clean it before you cook and serve it. Told you. Told you. It's real. Now, pictures are... Ish, ish, ish. Yeah. Very terrifying. You, do not look this up right now, guys. No, d- definitely do. Jamie, can you pop it up? Is that too out of control? Want to touch my floppy albino turtle? No way. Is that a thing? No, no. Adam just said it. Oh, oh, board. yeah. You're reading some people off the thing. Yeah. So this this guy, like, and he was super friendly and like, you know, I, I'd say like a nice little gay, nice little gay man. You know, I, always look and look, not there, gay, but just eccentric, right? We don't. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know, like. I don't know if you he don't was, know if he was eccentric. I don't know if he I'll was just happy he about was. his life mm-hmm. or he was gay. Um, but and look, he never he never touched me. You know, there was two different dudes that were working at that park, right? You had this guy, and then we had a guy that was um, uh, one of those like like little paddle boats, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you had an extra child, in, like in your family, which, like, it was three of us, so like I had to ride with the guy who was, you know, running it and the thing. Now this guy cut all of the netting out of his uh, <laughs> out of his bathing suit. <laughs> so when he paddled, you know, you got to kind of get a wide leg. Like I saw his fucking dick and balls like hanging out in like a huge fucking bush of pubic hair but he was tan zinc oxide on the nose all that shit he was clearly out to get pussy and it was just like oh all right and Are i you knew sure it was pussy I, yeah yes 100 percent. like all he was because all he would say is he was battling he'd be like see that chick what's up see that chick like the whole fucking ride and i was like yeah man and it's then a there little was hard for me <laughs> to concentrate on the chick but i'm seeing your dick and balls and bush and, and but with the bush um, it looked like three people running through the forest like looking back at fucking jason or somebody and i was just like because the, the way the paddle was going right because like, his legs were paddling, yeah and i was just like so these two balls and dick were and like, then there was another escape. guy at the park that did magic right yes and he, yes and he had the soft shell turtle in the hat on his lap. No, 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 no. But there was a magician there, and he was he was fucking weird and too. You had to reach. That in. guy was weird. Yeah. So every night of the weekend, and you got to bend it. I hope there's a Fantasy Island fan out there. Uh, yeah. From, from Beach Haven, New Jersey. There was on there. Yeah. Uh, oh, you got the turtle up. There it is. Boom. Turtle's up on the screen. I like how you put it on top of the ghost bed too. That's that's good. not. Yeah. You, is that you need a ghost that's bed? That's not for the that. one I was looking at, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, okay. Go- well, I didn't look. I didn't know. We've, I know we've got Ghost Bed coming up. I didn't know if you put it on the thing, but uh, either way, that's great. Um, but but yeah, the, the magician was weird. So every night of the week at Fantasy Island, there was Ugh. like one thing. There was a magician, the guy with the fucking floppy turtle. Um, there was something different, but it was a, like it was a nice establishment. Like uh-huh. where you were like, all right, sweet. This is definitely some like high end shit here. Um, the resort itself. Now yeah. the people, like, because even this dude, he looked like your average college bully from like any movie teen movie you know oh okay. in the 80s yeah, where you're yeah, just yeah. like oh that's dope um and he definitely cut the net out of his bathing suit so, so he that could it would hang out slang that dong to the ladies oh yeah because i'm sure because there, there was all hot chicks working there was like a water slide next door and some other shit there was all hot chicks working there girls like a covered up bulge more than like a f- an exposed i can tell you, hom- I just let you know. homeboy was definitely slang in the fucking wood that summer. I could promise you that. Uh-huh. Um, just his confidence. I was just sure. like, God damn it, man. Sure. It was amazing. And even at like nine, ten years old, or you know, like I remember thinking to myself, Jesus Christ, that's that's, that's incredible. That's what it is. Right? Yeah, that's incredible. Like that's what you need to do. Uh-huh. Probably why I, you know, I pulled my dick out all the time in college. Like you right. Know? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he fucking laid the wood. I'd love to find that guy and have him on the show. I wish you knew his name. Get yeah. him on and be like, hey, man, what was that summer for What's you? What's been up? Yeah. yeah. And I bet he was just, I bet you'd be like, man. He's still doing it. He's it still was, working there. 
camels, camel cigarettes. Uh, I fucked without rubbers all summer. I mm-hmm. probably got somebody knocked up. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's just like, you know, I, I'm on my second wife and I'm living my, fu- that was my best summer of my life. Yeah. That's who I was. You just had some like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But that was Fantasy Island. Uh, and that's these people too. Like these fucking exotic Joe, man. It's all, it's what we talk about all the time, which is like, if you're a rabbit owner, if you have like a snake terrarium at your house, like you are a specific type of person. It's not good or bad. It's just a specific type of person. You don't date a girl with a lizard. Uh, You don't date anyone with a snake whatsoever. Who was the, you dated someone with a lizard? No, no. I know somebody with a lizard. Oh, you said you dated some, a girl with a lizard before. I, I I think I did. Maybe I did. Um, fuck, I don't, who knows anymore? Mm-hmm. I'm going to be real. With this last week that's been going on, mm-hmm. my memory of things is completely fucking off. Right. Gone. I, this literally feels like an entire fucking year that this has been going on. Yeah. Um, over these last eight days. And I, man, I don't know. I, I don't like I'm having a hard time remembering shit about like what the real world was like. Oh, OK. Are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know life. I don't either. I don't even know life. I'm glad the studio's open so we can at least do shows. But uh, if that wasn't, I I would be losing my fucking shit right now. I tell you what, I would have gotten up, just grabbed a bag of Cheetos, and watched the rest of uh, Tiger King right now this morning. Uh, yeah, like your friend that texted that. It's like, yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Exactly. Why if you don't you? have. Why kids around or their babies or something mm-hmm. napping mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know another state just got shut down so well, ohio was the the latest okay, one yeah. that got shut down yesterday yeah uh illinois and all this so all these states are on lockdown it's like man if you're on lockdown and you can't go out anywhere fuck that hombre yeah dude cheetos drugs all mm. the all the liquor mm. everything and then mm. tiger king all day long oh you know, obviously that's going to wear off after a while, but I don't know where we go after this. After I was Tiger drinking. King is over. I was drinking at two yesterday. Yesterday, I get it. That is huge for me. Yeah, you know that, right? Turned off the alarm. Yeah, at four thirty. I never do that. I didn't want it to like make me feel bad, mm-hmm. right? So I turned off the alcohol alarm. Yeah, and uh, look, started drinking at two. Here you are. Here I, I am. I'll confess to you then. Um, I yesterday I did, I'm putting together this presentation for like the media company for this thing, and uh, I had to work yesterday. And I was like, man, I'm gonna work out today. I'm not gonna drink. I've been drinking a lot lately, like last week. You know, yeah. during all this, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna drink today. One rolls around, and I was just like, oh, well, I drank an entire gallon of water. What else could I put in my boredom mouth? A little vodka, soda, yeah. just, you know, it g- wasn't give me a all of the things. It, you're not confessing anything. Oh, you knew? Mm. Eh. All right. Well, now look. I, look, I don't, I don't feel bad that you know. I feel bad that I did it. Oh, yeah. Well, here's how I'm seeing people deal with it, right? Mm-hmm. So once it's first, like the schools are out, sure. quarantine, people are at, working from home. You go like, all right, there's like one second of like, okay, this is life. Let's do it. Yeah. And then day two, you're like, oh shit, like I cannot keep this up mm-hmm. for. So everyone is kind of dropping like flies in that. Um, I'm on day four of like trying to like run and not, right? Yeah. Drink all day sure. or eat shitty. But a lot of people are just starting that like realization today of like, okay. This is going to be a while. This is going to be a while. Yeah. I've dr- I've been drinking like it's spring break mm-hmm. or that like, hey, snow days kind of kind of deal. Snow yeah. days, airport rules. Yep. Right. Whatevs. And now it's kind of like, all right, I have two months. So like, what am I going to do? Maybe three. Maybe three. What am I going to do with this? Not, time? No, we're not really sure. And, you know, look, on the positive front, uh, besides all the negativity you're seeing in the media, because I mean that look that's that's partially fueling it and people a lot of people have messaged me and uh, and asked me my thoughts on this so I'll, I'll tell you uh, and breaking news Michigan just shut down too uh, right now uh, New Jersey as well so uh, I, feel, I feel like every day we're on it's like the end of the world yeah. um, what what was I saying oh oh the positive side of this is um, uh, 
fucking China opened up the movie theaters this weekend. Yeah. 507 movie theaters are open in China. Let's face it. If you're going to get coronavirus, it's going to be a fucking it's movie theater. Be a movie with theater. a bunch of dirtbag strangers Never coughing cleaned. all over you. Never cleaned. Never cleaned. Never cleaned. So that was, you know, their first case was on November 19th. Here we are six months later. Uh, buckle up, kids. That's all I'm saying. But it's not the end of the world like everybody else is saying. And like the media is going all in on this. And uh, th- a lot of people have messaged me about the tr- what, what Trump's reaction is to these. He's, now that he's got to give daily briefings, I guess he doesn't have to. It's voluntary on his part. But um, everybody's asking me, they're like, what do you think about Probably Trump talking should. shit to the yeah. media? Yeah. He last night just laid it out in a, in a few tweets, um, which, look, the one thing I'm not ants about Trump is his tweeting. Um, but he, last night he did say something where he was like, man, I'm the only one that knows the truth, us uh, and, or the Senate or what's going on, like mm-hmm. really behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. We're the only ones that know the truth. Because you guys are fucking doomsdaying the end of the world shit all goddamn day long and you're not actually reporting news, just speculation on mm-hmm. what, what could and possibly happen. Mm-hmm. They were like, you're the ones that are creating this fear and this fucking fear mongering mm-hmm. and, and this hoarding and all this other yeah. shit. Like, yeah. And it's true. I, like, you know, when this all started um, eight or nine days ago, like, you know, I got calls from congressmen and all this other shit and told me to buckle up and do things and whatever. And like, I'm glad that I did because it did all come true. Right. Mm-hmm. For the most part, like mm-hmm. they said, everything would be every state would be locked down by tonight. Mm-hmm. If it is, yes, I, I think with these everybody on on uh, YouTube right now, you're you guys are bringing. So, yeah, you're you're we're, I, it feels like we're close. We're getting close. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, the one thing that they're not reporting is a lot of these stores are restocking. So I finally got toilet paper yesterday. Yay. Like, right. That's a nice thing. Right. Um, that you can go into grocery stores. You can go to things. And yeah. it's like, you they're going to be low. They're, they so are really low. Yes. Everyone's fucking cool and just like goes in for what they need. Yes. And in our grocery stores here, and you I don't know if they're doing hoarding, that everywhere. But yeah. I don't know if they're doing that everywhere, but there is a limit of one mm-hmm. for, for, for the important items. And they're, um, you know, enforcing it when you get to the register and i don't mind that yeah because it's like great i, I want other people to have things yeah yeah um, I especially don't, if the stores are going to stay yeah, open dude, I don't and wanna, stay stocked then like we're good i don't want like even if i walked like it was we were short on toilet paper right luckily it didn't get to that point right but i even if i walked into a store and there was a hundred you know fucking packs of it i'm not going to take all of those no because i want other people to have them i know there was a fight at a walmart um over the weekend where a woman had tried to purchase 527 cans of soda and essentially had wiped out this walmart and they were like hey lady fuck off yeah and uh she was like no there's no limit on these so i'm gonna and it's Mm -hmm. just like it's 527 cans like what are we what, what are we doing here um, you know, other things like meats and things like that. Like I, I've noticed the meat sections have been low at all the grocery stores, Yeah, but there is something where yeah. it's just like, all right, yeah. great. There's something. It may not be the like cut or the thing that you want, but there's stuff, but there. there's stuff. Yes. And you know, yes. eggs we were worried about. There is, there was eggs, totally and, eggs. and things like that. And like pasta is running low, rice running is low. running low, but they're going to restock it. I mean, they're according. restocking almost every day. Yeah. These fucking people are the real heroes. Like, holy shit grocery works these days man (laughs) holy shit um but there is some positivity and some like all right great um if china's open and they've got theaters out there yeah maybe we're not that far behind it It, are these next three months gonna fucking suck Mm -hmm. probably Mm -hmm. but you know we're in it now and there's nothing we can really do is there a big amish community in ohio uh ohio and pennsylvania yes (laughs) so towards the uh, I love the memes that are like, has anyone told the Amish what's going on? But then everyone on here is like, Rumspringa. Uh, Rumspringa, <laughs> motherfucker. Like, when you say Rumspringa, <laughs> motherfucker, <laughs> makes me laugh every time. But yeah, Christopher Broman. Broman. Uh, safety first medical. I mean, feels very official uh, yeah. on the YouTube. But um, um, By the way, that cough, if you're listening to the audio show, don't, I don't have the coronavirus. I think I had it already uh, weeks ago. For real. And so it's just like, eh, uh, I, I think I had it at some point. I really did. 
I'm cool. fine now, but um, yeah. cool. We should get to sponsors. Right? We should. <laughs> we should. What's your fucking? A member when you had Corona. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I keep calling it carnivore. Carnivore. Why? Carnivore virus. I think I'm like weirdly. China. Yeah. China. That's it. That's all you need to call it. I have like Chinese weird. Virus. It's not dyslexia. It's more just like dyslexia, right? <laughs> That's when you read things backwards. Oh Is that gosh. what you're doing? James. It's more like laziness reading, right? To yeah. where you just go like, oh, I know what that word is. Yeah. And, or yeah, like yeah, you yeah, read yeah. the first yeah. two and you're like, oh, oh, carnivore. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? Or like, what's the one where people eat people? Cannibal. Ah, cannibals. Yes. Cannibal virus. Cannibal virus. Close. I, I, they were eating fucking bats, I guess. We don't even know that. They, we, we don't even know if that's even real. No. We just know it came from China. China. Uh, we got some sponsors, James, who baby this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 25% off now. It is up from 20. It is now at 25% off everything in the entire store. There is mattresses, sheets, pillows, adjustable bases, all that shit uh, that you need. And I know you're saying, hey, man, I'm not fucking I, I'm not working in this economy right now or I got laid off my job. The 36-month pay-as-you-go program uh, with no interest is available for all this dill. So this dill, um, you can get the shit for like 20 bucks a month, um, and it's great. So a lot of companies are doing this. I'm glad GhostBed is is one of them. And, uh, you know, trying to make your inside home as comfortable as you could possibly get for, you know, close to 20 bucks a month if you need a new mattress and all that shit. They ship it in a box so it comes right to your house. You don't have to do dick or pull it into your uh, bedroom right after the Amazon guy delivers it, or or the ghost bed people. What do yeah. they What do they use? Like UPS or yeah, yeah, whatever it is. Uh, you can just pull it in your house, pop it open, you're good to go. And the pillows are free. Pillows are free with a mattress, so there is nobody else doing deals like this. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> boom 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 boom. Shabloinkers. Yeah. Shabloinkers. Strike Force Energy, best in the biz, man. No carbs, no sugars, uh, no calories up in this magwai. And you can, it's a tasty, tiny little tin pouch. You just squeeze it. Here it is, right here. Boom on camera. Squeeze it into any liquid available. You're good to go. Or I you drink get this the, shit all day long. Last the longer. Than, the, Sorry. Oh, the, oh yeah, the, yeah. This. <laughs> or you get the squirter. She <laughs> says. The old squirter. Um, yeah, they, they, look, they got four amazing flavors. Grape, Ridge, Lemon, Orange. Uh, squeeze it in any liquid available. Lasts longer than five-hour energy. No carbs, no sugar, no gluten. Uh, you can get a 10-pack, 40-pack, 750-milliliter bottle. This one, uh, you can gang-gang this because 7-Elevens are closed. And now they're just shipping this shit to your house. Yeah. Brother, uh, go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. Promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Last but not least... Talking about straightrazors.com, James. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you're right, kids. Oh, boy. If you're listening to the audio show at home and you were like, hey, man, I heard an echo on that one. I pulled my headphones off of my head because I didn't want my... Head sprung. I didn't want my head, head sprung. sprung. You know, head head sprung. sprung. What's wrong with you, I'll dude? I'll tell you what's wrong with me. Uh, that was the song this morning when I got in the car. <laughs> um, I was like, what the fuck? Um, look, straightrazors.com has got everything you need to uh, to be a real man in this life. I, if, if, a lot of the shaving products are sold out, man. You can go to straightrazors.com. They've got fucking their shit. I think it's like 50% off now, man. Go there. They're trying to help out as well, dude. Um, and if you're worried about using a, a straight razor, they get safety razors that are just they are just like your normal razor. Um, but the blades are better. So they last longer. You don't have to deal with this shit. Um, they got uh, everything. They got uh, shampoos, beard oils, mustache waxes, conditioners, everything you need. Go to straightrazors.com today and be a real man in this Life. Life. And it's life. Um, whew, What's up, head sprung? Head sprung. <laughs> if you're new to the show, and a lot of people are, because I think we're the only ones that are going live and have a fucking studio every day. Um, you know what? I want to say really quick, I think it's cool 
we have like a group of guys that get together in these yeah and the live and they kind of just like talk to live each on other YouTube. yeah it's awesome so we're like the connecting them it's Craig it's awesome Ruben Reed Richard Reed yeah. Matt Harvey Matt Matt um, Harvey I haven't seen Matthew him but Harvey. here he is yeah yeah anyway um carry on so so I have this fucking thing on my my phone so I. Like, obviously, I'm like everybody else, right? I've got the this phone, one of these fucking... It's a piece of shit, so I'm not even bragging about it. I, I, I don't, I'm I not a big fan of this iPhone. No. The new one. Um, or you have the new one. I'm sorry. I have the other the other one. Whatever, man. Mine's I, awesome, I but anyway. I fucking hate it. Is it really? Mm -hmm. uh, this one's a piece of shit. Um, I, I got the first one on the first day, so I'm, I'm probably sure it's like, oh. oh, hey, we've got fucking robots parts and some, you know, glue right. in here. Anyways, I plug this in. This is my car, you know, they, they have the Apple car care bullshit and everything, right? Um, every day, though, is when I turn on the car, it is a fucking song that I have not listened to in like 30 years. And it, it just keeps popping up. And it's like, I feel like it's trying to narrate my life. Right. I can't stop it. I don't know what it is. And I I was one of those like everybody knows my love of music obviously well back in the day when you had like LimeWire and fucking you know what was the other one Napster Napster when you had that like my catalog is so extensive I think there's there was over like eighteen or nineteen thousand songs on my iTunes at one point right? okay so much so that I had to put them on a separate drive for this this computer when I was writing because it was like we're out of space and your computer's gonna shut down. Um, and the guy was like, Jesus Christ, your music files are huge. And I was like, yeah, well, I didn't plug them into this phone. I didn't think. So why these fucking songs are popping up like head sprung? The fuck was that out? 1998? LL Cool J? But you back up your- I'm gonna get my head sprung. I'm gonna get your head sprung. I don't even know when that was big. Yesterday's song when I got in the car was Sign of the Times by Harry Styles. And that was creepy because I was driving on to work. Oh my gosh. Oh, I was driving on to work, empty road. Yeah. On Sunday. And I'm just looking around at the ghost town we're in, and I'm just like, I see. We gotta get away from here. I see two people walking out with like yeah. nine stacks of paper towels, and I was just like, oof, this is creepy. Um, Headsprung was on this morning. Uh, last night was like the the Scientist by Coldplay, and I was just like shit that I haven't listened to since fucking forever. And I'm like, where are you digging this shit up from? Right. Where just to like fuck with you? Yeah, dude. I'm yeah. like, man, was it in the cloud? Did it all get trained? I don't. I don't you fucking know. know we dude. don't understand stuff. I don't. We don't understand stuff. I'm not a you know? scientist. Look, we don't. Never do, pretended to be one. We don't do that kind of stuff. You no, know we mean? don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> so. How th whatever this phone is, and I'm I'm afraid to get a new one now because I actually look forward to turning on my car. Where I'm like, all right, great. What what the fuck's gonna happen next? What is it? What's the next song? Right. What's that gonna be? Right. Uh, like three days ago was Skinny Love by fucking Bonnie Bear. I was just like, oh, all right, right. No, 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 no explanation for it whatsoever. But right. we went with it, and uh, and I see you. Bony Bear. Bony Bear. The one Thank you, song Ruben. that you, ref you refused to play in concert. Fucking oh, dick. Oh, he does now, though, right? I there don't think so. There was a time when everyone was radio heading. I think he does now. I think he's. I think he learned a little. Bit. No, no, and and there was a thing because I like I like I said I write some music and I was writing on. I usually keep Spotify over in the background, right? Um, this is for the car. Spotify is for here, and uh, I kept Spotify on and. I was curious about the Bon Iver thing. Right. And I couldn't, you couldn't play Skinny Love unless you listened to the entire album. Like, it was a weird fucking thing. And I was just like, did he what? do this, this fucking cocksucker? A dick. Yeah. Well, um, fine. I can say what, I retract though. my previous statement. I can statement. say what, he's in a some ice house in Wisconsin writing another Oh yes. banger of an oh, album, I bet, though. Oh, yes. You know? If Him anybody, and Tom York, probably. Oh, uh, they're going to write the most depressing shit of all time, and I'm here for it. Yeah. I'm bringing it. I can't wait. It's going to be about the end of the world and isolation. Yeah. And just like. Uh, James, you have a crime corner? <gasps> I do. Yeah. Crime corner. Crime corner. Um, First of all, Ruben and Craig, thank you. Compliments will get you mentioned. 
Um, <laughs> what? Just reading comments live off of YouTube and just saying, uh, a compliments will get you I'm just uh, saying mentions. thank you. I'm not saying what they said. I'm just saying thank you to them. And, you know, the best way to get your name mentioned yeah, is yeah, to yeah. compliment me. Yeah. Anyways, on bi- I mean, I'm not biased. No, of course not. So Heath Barnes, you know, you know, a young detective named Heath Barnes. Heath Barnes sounds familiar. Right. Yeah. Why does it? I don't know why it does, Who but knows? it does. Again, right? after day eight in the apocalypse, did I date somebody with a lizard? Probably. You said you did. Name? You said you did. But then we both know someone with a lizard. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, was it her? No, I didn't date her. OK. No, no, no fucking way. Carried on. We'll uh, carry on. You know, then. A buddy of mine did, though. Um, yeah. She's as tragic as you think she is. Well, you don't know him actually. The, I don't. No, back in the day, that's why I met her was through him. They used to date. But he's older, right? Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. Yeah. No. I knew that. I knew that. Yeah. But I didn't know if that was like a little slip when you were like, "Oh, I dated someone with a lizard." No. 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 Okay. Uh, I. I Anyway, think about this. I, I definitely dated somebody with a fucking lizard. Um, go, keep going. Not dated. A like you went dates. back to the house. A couple dates, yes, yes, yes. And there was a lizard there. There was a lizard there, yeah, yeah. And that was the last time. Right. You it wasn't back. a relationship of anything longer than... Did you go back to the house twice? No, dude. Like, that was it. it First was like a time you date, see the lizard. It was a two-date person. So maybe I, I used So it's the, like one yes. date you didn't see the lizard. You only heard about the lizard. Second date, you got to meet the lizard. No, and she got to meet over. the lizard. You know what I'm it saying? Was a t- there was a towel over Both the thing. Both of you got to meet the lizard. Yeah, there was a towel over the thing. And I, I like the double entendres, you know? Thank you. That will get you everywhere for me. Heath Barnes, Detective Heath Barnes. This is a fun little one. I mean, I don't know. We're going to learn about it together. Sure. So drunk teen disguised as a flower pot uses chainsaw to rob gas station as you do. Whoa. Yeah, as so you do in you, times in these trying times. You read that a little too fast. I'm going to need you to go <laughs> a little slower so I can hear that. Drunk teen. Drunk teen disguised as flower pot uh-huh. uses chainsaw to rob gas station as you wow. do. Wow. Okay. All right. So. And in times like these, normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And normal that's, night. That's fine. But was it in times like these? I mean, maybe. I don't know. Probably not. This is probably, it's probably happened before the apocalypse. Yeah, started. it did. So, who hasn't done this before, though? So, early morning. How did he dress as a, fo- uh, like a flower pot? So, early morning, a teenage, teenager allegedly got drunk as hell mm-hmm. and put a flower pot on his head and grabbed a chainsaw ah. and tried to rob a 7 Eleven. That, now that makes more sense. Now, we, here we go. I didn't know if he had a flower pot costume. <laughs> and I was like, did they make those? No. <laughs> no. Thought that the flower pot on the head would be enough. Okay. You know what I mean? Just like grabbed a flower pot. Sure, sure. Put it on the head yep. so it's like covered like this. Mm-hmm. About 4 30 a.m. Mm. Monday, mm. Stephen Frank Steele. Oh, Stephen it, Frank Steele. He's got a three namer. Oh he's my a three namer. That sounds like a porn star. It doesn't sound like a teenager though, yeah. does it either? Stephen Frank Steele. <laughs> like, who named their. Your delivery's kid here. That. Boom, it's my dick in the pizza box. <laughs> Starring Stephen <laughs> Frank, Frank Steele. Steel. Yeah, good for you. Good yeah. for him. Yeah. Um, entered a 7 Eleven attached, attached to a gas station mm. in Australia. Oh, okay. Well, uh, you're welcome. Wow, well, that makes more and sense. And tried to attack two store clerks with a chainsaw, which was running at the time. Oof. Terrified, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Terrified, the clerks fled to the back room and called the police. Undeterred, the teen smashed a window with the chainsaw, Mm -hmm. knocked over two shelves of snacks, and demanded money. When the clerks refused to hand over any cash, steal. We've switched to just steal now. Mr. Steel. Mr. Steel allegedly pulled down his pants, mooned them, stole a soda, and stormed out of the store. And damaged Oof. a car in the parking lot. Well, that's going to happen. And pooped on the ground. No, I'm joking. Oh, oh no. Like, <laughs> it just keeps Christ. going. Yeah, it just keeps but going. But damaged a car on and his way he out. Sh- he chainsawed the yeah. turd. <laughs> and now. then he chainsawed the shit, went back in, had shitty chainsaw. Oof. Oof. Now a that real really was like chainsaw. Taken. Yeah. <laughs> with it like flying all over. I'm fine with it getting attacked with a chainsaw. I'm not but fine. But if there's poop on it. Yeah, if your own shit's on it. You can have anything in the store. Yeah, take whatever you want. Take whatever you want. Take another baby Ruth. A police police officer responded to the call, spotted the flower pot clad teen mm-hmm. walking down the road, still had the flower pot on, 
Um, you don't say. Mm-hmm, and detained him. The chainsaw was found in a bush not far from the store. All right. All right. Uh, Steele much- was re- arrested and charged with one count of armed robbery, two counts of willful damage, one count of going armed to cause fear, one count of public nuisance, and one count of pooping on chainsaw. No. 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 One count of possessing suspected stolen property. Oof. So he did steal shit there. No, I think the things that he had were stolen. Ah, so the chainsaw and the flower pot it, were both it, stolen it. in order to do this. Yeah, because here's a fun fact, kids. If you're looking to steal flower pots, like they're just outside. They're everywhere. Uh, they're Home free. Depot and all that other shit. So yeah, they're not free. I mean, definitely want to clarify that. But they're 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 yeah. out and usually left out at night. So he was probably in a hurry and was like, "Fuck, what do I grab to disguise myself?" Boom, flower pot, and then. You know, the chainsaw yep. was probably his. I don't think he stole that. How did he? How, how did, did he, he see through the flower pot? Yeah, a lot of lot of questions. I wish we had a picture of that. You know what I'm saying? I wish we had a picture of that. Of the what? We'll see. Of, of the guy. In the of fucking, the guy. Yeah. Did he carve out holes in the flower pot? It's hard to tell. Like the picture that I see, it's hard to tell. Yeah. Probably Jamie will. Um, pop it up and you'll we'll be see. like well I don't know I mean it looks like he can see you know those grainy you know yeah, robbery yeah, yeah, pictures yeah. of like the, the I don't know what's footage. going on yeah sure. Yeah, sure. yeah 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 well, we'll find out in the meantime we'll get to the revolutionary figure of the day shall we Jabes we shall you know who this is going to Kenny oh Rogers oh. Uh, no, K no, Raj. no. Man, it was that that one uh, that one hurt. That he one hurt. Knew, he knew when to fold him, huh? He did, and uh, that's the thing about the gambler, man. Is uh, look, I don't, I don't even blame him for checking out on this mm-hmm. life right now. I mean, a guy like him, he doesn't need this bullshit. He was eighty-one, and uh, he was out of there. Um, uh, so, I, I did some crazy stories on on Kenny Rogers on my Instagram. At ST James, ST James on Instagram. I don't often praise you or give you compliments, <laughs> but that was really funny. <laughs> Talking about Kenneth Ray oh. Rogers. Oh. Ah, Rogers. <laughs> oh, Rogers. <laughs> so we had a barbecue on uh, Saturday. We cooked out ribs and all this shit. And I just put Kenny Rogers on the old uh, Apple music and let that go for the day. You really did. You got you went for it. and hold on. No and walk away. No and run. You better count your money. I sitting at the table. Um, time enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When the deal is done. Um, one of the best there ever was. And uh, I got to meet him as a kid. I got to meet him and Dolly Parton, by the way. And he was a fucking man, dude. Just a man. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. And a smart businessman. The Kenny Rogers oh my gosh. roasters were huge in the South. Didn't he like own like all of this shit? Yeah. Too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wish I Very still had these pictures. Thinking. I have a picture of them somewhere of me and him as a, as a child. And um, uh, I went, I met him at the Grand Old Opry, actually, at one of the old school. Uh, back in the day, they used to do the CMAs at the Grand Old Opry, the Country Music Awards. Mm-hmm. My, my dad was a country DJ in Nashville, so like I got to go pretty much every summer, I felt like. And uh, I got to meet all them. Like him, it was like him, Alabama. Oh, um, yes. Like I've got pictures of like me in Alabama and all this other nice. shit. Somewhere they exist. What's an Alabama song? Um, oh, man. Mustard and relish and fucking. They, can't, they made a... <laughs> Is that one? Yes. I mean, come on. There's a baseball song. That gives song. me nothing. There's a baseball song. <laughs> Alabama's got a million songs. I know. I'm um, just trying to think of one. But let me talk about Kenny Rogers real Please, quick. Please, and I'll find Alabama songs. Islands in the Stream was massive. And, oh, uh, yes. It was him okay, and Dolly Parton. Ahead. So go I met ahead. them at that when they were singing <laughs> that song. And uh, yeah, Islands in the Stream. He was one of the best in the biz. And then growing up, um, the the fucking movie Six Pack for me was on repeat forever because I grew up in the South, kid in Georgia, and uh, this fucking sweets white trash movie about a, a race car driver um, 
six pack where he has his okay. kids and all his other shit. Okay. We had so TBS was our local station in Georgia, and it was literally on all day long. So you had three options as a kid, right? You had Andy Griffith all day. Mm-hmm. You had uh, Michael Landon's fucking, and these are all reruns, obviously. Michael Landon's, uh, God damn it, Little House on the Prairie. Yes, A Little House on the Prairie, and then there would be Seventh Heaven reruns, which which she was on. Okay. Um, Wait, which or, he was no on? Highway to Heaven. Highway to Heaven. Highway I was heaven, gonna yeah. say Seventh yeah. Heaven with uh, Beelster. Sorry about that. Um, and the father in that was touching children and is uh, arrested for that. Oh, but, that's uh, right. Yeah, and Seventh Heaven, so they pulled those. Different time. Highway to Heaven. Different and show. And then Six Pack would be like the night movie that they would show, where it was just like, all right, sweet, man, Six Pack's on for the fucking 5,000th time. And that was our local station, so it was just there. And you're like, all right, that it was that, and then WGN. So, like, it, you know, it was on WGN as well and, like, TBS – and you you either watch the Braves or the Cubs growing up because all the sh- they were on all goddamn day. So like that was kind of your pattern. And as a kid in the summers, you're just like, all right, sweet. I've seen six pack a million fucking times. Yeah. Um, but uh, K. Raj, dude, he did it. He did it. He did it. And he really ch- did it. He really folded him at the right time. Because let's face it, if you're 81, do you really want to live through this stupid shit for another three months? No. No, dude. Um, this is not going to be the last of it. He went. He partied. Yes. He went out, dude. You say you have a picture of that, Jamie, or no? You have a picture of the guy with the pot on the set? Answer me, Jamie. What? Just say yes or no. Oh, okay. What's up? All right. Oh, shit. There we go. Can he see? You know, I don't know. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, That's a nice pull. We call it a callback in the biz, Jamie. I'm really really glad we have that. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, but you can't tell if he can see or not. No. You know what I mean? It looked like he was lifting the the pot Maybe up. Maybe like it was almost like a hat like that. Yeah, lifting it. Well, it, it looked oh, like he okay, had to lift okay. the pot up yeah. above his eyes. But look at that. It's poop, not. It's not really poop a saw. disguise. Look at that poop saw. Yeah, it's not really a disguise. No. When you cut back in, you can see the fucking unfinished side of the set. Jamie, why is that? No, why can't you just keep it in a split? You know, there, we're professional. Point. There it is. Yeah, so he had to, he's got to lift it up. He's got to oh, lift it up okay. to see. There we okay, go. Okay, okay. So, great disguise, idiot. Yeah, dude. Uh, he's, that's when you're drunk as shit, because I was like, yo, how are you going to get holes in a pot? Um, so, eh, now it makes sense. He lifted it up and was just like, all right, sweet, man. This isn't. This is definitely going to work. Yeah. Maybe half my head. Nobody would give a shit. Right. It's drunken mistakes. We've all been there. We've all done it. I never walked into a convenience store with a chainsaw yet, but... I'm also yeah. not going to take that off the table um, in my life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all right, let's get through. Uh, let's get through fucking Alabama's hits here. Um, the the baseball song was probably their last one. The baseball song? Yeah, mustard and relish. Um, all right, <laughs> God, it's all I keep. I, all I keep thinking of is those fucking goddamn. Um, all right, Song of the South was probably their biggest one, I would say. Okay. Song, Song of the South. Sweet potato pie and, and I shut my, my mouth. mouth. And gone on, on the wind. wind. Ain't Everybody nobody going, going back, back again. again. But it was like a little drummer boy beat in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mountain music. That's their. That, that's what they're saying is number one. I, I'd probably go Song of the South as one. You think? Yeah, dude. I would go. I would, I would definitely go. Song in the South as as one. On yeah, that yeah, one. for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna scroll down this list here. I wouldn't say Mountain Music is a one though. Love in the first degree. If you're gonna play in Texas, God damn it, yeah, I'd go that. I, that's up there. If you're going to play in Texas, you gotta have a fiddle in the band. Oh I, yeah, somebody said that on the on the board. Uh, Born Country, come on, yes, dude. Um. Christmas Feels so Dixie? right the closer you get. Yeah, Christmas and Dixie, dude. Jukebox on my mind down home. I'm that's it. That's the fucking song with uh fucking mustard and relish. I'm in a hurry and don't know why I'm gonna Wow. You yeah, really dude. know I know all the fucking You really Alabama. are familiar with their work, yeah, to dude. say the least. S O B. Problem is though, they're probably gonna die next. And that makes me sad. 
<laughs> Alabama, yeah. Yes, dude. Well, there you go. You're just going to go down the line. Oh, whoever is not from the South is probably watching the show. Go, what the fuck, bro? I don't know anything you're What's talking cheap about. Cheap seats. Oh, that, yeah, that, that's it. I'm sorry. Craig. That's the cheap seats. Craig. Craig Dulesky. Yeah. You fucking win today, my man. Cheap seats. Shit. He that's kept correct. writing it and was like, God damn it, motherfuckers. Cheap seats. Well, I try not to look down all the time. Um, but uh, yes, cheap seats. Shit. That was mustard and relish, dude. That's, it's right. He's right on that. And that wasn't even on their list of greatest hits. And that was one of my wow. favorite songs. You are so, familiar with their work. I am, dude. I told you. <laughs> who knew? Really? Yeah, who knew? How familiar with Alabama all, you are. All were. the fucking country stars. And you know, how catch them, all those guys. That was big, man. Country used to be, there was a, a run of country in the 90s that was just fucking unparalleled. And then what happened was, towards the end of the 90s, they went to more of this like pop country shit. Taylor, you know who changed it? It was Taylor Swift. She started changing it, and then it was just like, all right, cool. Now, like, fucking Hootie is a country singer. Right. Darius Rucker. And right. he's, look, people saw the value in it. He's great. Because people who listen to country music actually buy the music. So, yeah. therefore, and, and I will say this, in, in all fairness to country, like, you can still tell a story, right? And they'll let you do that in a song. Mm. Whereas, you know, rap, they don't really fucking do that anymore. It's just like, yeah. Yeah, 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 a lot. How much money you got? A, a lot. lot. How much lawyers you got? A, a lot. lot. How much time we got? A, a lot. lot. Yeah. So country, you could still still tell a story and and do all the shit. Now it's country every day. You know, it's like fucking Florida Georgia Line and like uh, this rap country. You know. Sure. Um, what are they calling it? They have a name. They have a name for it. I, I, we said this on another show, and I don't know. I don't know what the fucking name for Oof. that the, the new rap country is, but. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, you know, Uncle Cracker, Safety First Medical, said Uncle Cracker is now a country. I remember that. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, about, fucking Kid Rock. What about Rock. Kid is yeah. country. So, um, somebody else, uh, the, the Pit Steam Fitter 21. Great username, by the way. Uh, this is R.A.P. Alabama. Rostradamus is now spoken. Hip Hop, Rural yeah. Rap. Oh, Hip Hop. Yeah, r- yeah, that's right. Hip Hop, Rural Rap. Gross. Yeah. It's what it is. It's what it is. So you're welcome for it. You're welcome for it. And we're, we're welcome for you. Thanks for uh, tuning in all the time. And what, what is going to happen for the audio show, by the way, is um, instead of getting it the night before like usual, it'll just go up as soon as we go live on YouTube. So this will yeah. usually be up around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So then there's no Sunday show. Is that well, there's no Sunday night, night show. Night show, yeah, but it will be o'clock. like every day. Every day live yeah. so that way you can go. Because look, look, we know you guys are stuck at home. We know half the states are now quarantined. We also know Trump is highly considering it, and it'll probably be in the next two days, let's face it. Uh, also shut down airline travel. Um, so we're going to keep going live every single day for Ross Patterson Revolution. Um, we got some awesome guests that are calling into Drinking Bros. We can't go live with them. Um, just in case something gets fucked up yeah, and then so you're kind of stuck. But uh, we have an awesome guest tonight, and that show will be up around 8 p.m. tonight for Drinking Bros, Drinking Broettes goes. Um, and then, uh, to, to look, Dakota Meyer show is on our network. Savage Saturdays with Derek Wyda are on Saturdays. I mean, we, we have you covered yeah. all seven days of the week. So uh, we're here for you, and we appreciate it. Just go to – do me a favor and just go to iTunes. And just review the show and rate it five stars. The fucking advertisers want this shit. So yeah, um, it, it's really helpful for us. So go to iTunes and rate and review the show. Uh, um, we greatly appreciate it. And there are no live shows coming today, but we'll be here well, every. This. Yeah, we're so here. people we're are asking. I know, but people are asking for the rest of the day. Um, not no, today. Th- there'll, there'll be a show at eight o'clock tonight, though. It's, but it's a good every, one. Every um, yeah. really great one. Drinking Bros will be so. Yes, and that's the other question. Since since you're asking, Drinking Bros will go every day. It necessarily won't be live Why? every day because it depends on the guest. Right. Um. So we're kind of working around guest schedule on that one. Where Drinking Bros, you know, we have a bunch of fun guests, and this one people just like to hear us talk shit. So, um. There will be a Drinking Bros tonight at 8 o'clock that will be up. I can promise you that. Right. Um, and, and you will get five. No, shit. You'll get six shows a week on Drinking Bros. So you will get a show every single day on Drinking Bros. You will get six a week. And um, we're going live every day. We're 11. going every, every Monday through Friday live. Um, we're going to try to be right around the 11, 1130 area. And uh, we're here for you. And we're not going anywhere. Um, the, the studio is open. 
um, our workers are still alive. So, you know, until they start dropping, uh, we'll see. But right. <laughs> But we're here for you every single day. Uh, yeah. And we love you. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. R.I.P. Rogers. Broettes tonight, not tomorrow. Yes, Stringer Broettes is tonight at 8.